like so let me ask you this Deshaun. where where do you rank them now like where do you where do you put michigan kind of in the pantheon of of the best teams in the country are they in the same tier as gonzaga and baylor to you are they a step below like is there someone else that's on par with them what do you think um honestly i would say they're a step below gonzaga because i mean granted they michigan came out here and the speed of the last two what three games so far have like just played and dominated against ranked teams i would say like i can't say that they're bad they're, they look very good and especially tonight was a great they, they played like they won the game in great fashion gonzaga as I, I feel like they've played a they've already almost played everybody except for baylor mm-hmm you know, like I, I look at the way Michigan started their season, and, and obviously you can't knock it. I mean, they started the season where they started it, and they're still they're still going on, they're still trucking along, and they're still winning games, and, and they're winning obviously in great fashion, like they did tonight. But like I feel like Gonzaga has like answered a lot of calls already. The only call that hasn't have an answer was Baylor yet, right now. They've mm-hmm. answered mostly every call they got from a ranked team, and they're now they're in their their conference, and they're blowing through people right now. <laughs> And now we get to watch Michigan and we get to watch Baylor play through the competition and they're playing well, but it will never know what they'll like in comparison to one another until they meet up because I, I, I the, the scale is different now. Like, you know, mm-hmm. I feel like Gonzaga's already played their hard part of the season, not to knock their conference. Their conference is not bad, but it's not the big 12 and it's not the big 10. So it's yeah, and it's also be, it's also a little down compared to what it usually used is. Used to be exactly. Like, that's and, you know, like St. Mary's, St. Mary's is in one of those years where they're kind of like retooling a little bit, yeah. and you know, same thing with BYU. BYU lost uh, Yoli Childs and T.J. Hawes and yeah. um, the other shooter, uh, Blake. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Doesn't matter for this conversation. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's they're going to kind of roll through everything that they see in the WCC. Um, so. It's going to be tough to gauge them moving forward. And, and of course, we're going to hear all the same talking points when it comes to, oh, Baylor or all oh, Gonzaga doesn't play anybody in the league play, blah, 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 whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of how I would rank them, I think that Gonzaga is in a, a tier of their own. You know, I, as much as I love this Baylor team and as much as the metrics love them, um, I, I just think that you look up and down that, that Gonzaga roster and they have uh, the number one, a uh, potential number one pick in the country in Jalen Suggs who's probably not, not going to be the player of the year uh, on this team. That's probably yeah. going to end up being Corey Kisper, who could be like a top 10 pick in, in his own right. Drew Timmy's going to end up playing in the NBA and is the perfect five man for what they wanted to. Uh, they have a guy that was a former five-star that's in his third season that started for two years in the SEC, coming off the bench in Andrew Nemhard. Joel Yayi is going to end up playing in the NBA or a very high level overseas and be on the French national team at some point. And he is their fourth or fifth leading scorer, got a triple-double earlier this year. And Anton Watson is just kind of like the perfect fit for a glue guy at the four. Same thing with some of their guards and their grad transfers off the bench. Like, I think when it's all said and done, I, I, I do believe that Gonzaga is going to end up going undefeated. And I do think when it's all said and done, we are going to have the conversation of whether or not they are uh, as good or better than like 2018 Villanova, 2012 Kentucky, like teams of that. I, I think that they're going to end up being in that conversation. Question. Um, yeah, yeah. Do you think there will be a dip off because of the teams they're playing in their conference? Like I'm, you, I'm I know, about- I know you heard the, the steel sharp and steel conversation and everything like that with Baylor and Michigan. And any other team that is uh, in these, you know, power five conferences, like they're going to be playing against each other, you know, obviously every two days, so on and so forth. And then we're going to get to the end of the season. They're going to have the conference tournament. They're going to be playing against each other. And then all of a sudden now we get to the tournament and Gonzaga has played uh, a different schedule for the last 10 games. Now, obviously, we've watched Gonzaga go into the tournament and it didn't matter in either way. They, They wake up. And yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? They they wake up and play. But do you think that this year could be an issue being as how the year is going? That it's they not, can't they won't be able to wake up against these teams that are playing against competition. Wake up like you to see teams that we're we're watching Wisconsin go like take a small tank for a second with this game, but then sooner or later towards the end of the season, they'll pick it back up. Like that's yep. Wisconsin will pick it back up. So they'll they'll take their little small dip. And then we used to have that conversation when I was in college. It's like I'd rather play 
really well during the year. I mean, all year, of course. But if we're going to play well during the year and then have, like, the end of January, early February to have our, like, mishaps, as long as we pick it up by the time we get toward the end of February and March, we're all good. Like, I have no problems. Yeah. It's because it's one of those things where, like, when you're in league play, eventually someone's going to kind of figure out what you do. They're going to get it exactly. on team. It's going to work against one team. Then the next two or three teams you play are going to start doing that same thing against you. Then you have to make that adjustment and figure out how you can make a counter to what they're doing. And you kind of go through those like those waves throughout a season. Uh, it's, I don't think it's going to be like that for Gonzaga. The biggest thing that I'm worried about in that conference is that since they're uh, so much more talented than anyone, just developing bad habits, um, not being as crisp, uh, running the ball screens, not – um, you know, making sure that you're you're cutting as hard or um, coming off the screens as hard or kind of getting out of, uh, you know, defensively, like not making the rotations that you're supposed to make and being there on yeah. time because you're athletic enough to be able to make um, – to be – like to make up for the mistakes that you made. So, that, I mean, that's my biggest thing. Um, and then – so for Baylor, I mean, Baylor's right there. Um, I, I think they're a little bit below just because I don't think they have the same kind of elite high-level talent that, that Gonzaga does. Yeah. Um, offensively, like when they make when they are making threes, they're really really dangerous. Um, but like Jared Butler, Macy O.T., Davion Mitchell is is not nearly as good as Gonzaga's backcourt. Um, I love everyday John Jonathan Chamuchachwa, uh, and he's not quite as good as Drew Timmy. Um, the only thing I will say is this: like Mark Vital is kind of the perfect piece for them for the style they want to play because they can switch everything, and Mark Vital can guard literally anybody on the planet at this point. Um, so. I I think I, Baylor's really good. I think they're a couple below. And then for me, it's it's kind of Michigan is in that same level as like Villanova. We haven't really seen Villanova play, so I'm going to be a little bit worried about what yeah. happens when they, like, with the rust when they come back. But just on paper, like Villanova is still very, very good. So I think Michigan yeah. is right there with like Villanova. And I still think like Tennessee belongs in that conversation because then you start getting into like, okay, we got to start talking about like this, that, and the third. Texas. I think it has to be right there as well. Yeah, um, man. There's like a lot but, of teams there. There's a lot of teams there. So Yeah, but I mean, Michigan is very, very good. And the thing that's that's very uh, comforting to me about like hyping them and, and buying into them is that they have the players that can allow them to match up with these teams that go small. Like Isaiah yeah. Livers can guard two through four. Franz yeah. Wagner might be the most underrated defender in the country. Like he he is so good. He, one, he's a playmaker. Like he can block shots yeah. and he can steals. He's so good positionally. He just kind of. This, this was another thing that that Ant and Stu were saying on the stream, which I totally agree with. And, and I'm, I'm curious your take. Uh, he played for like high level European clubs in in Germany when mm -hmm. he was younger. Yeah. So when he was like 15, 16, 17, to be able to go and, and kind of like play and practice with the first team, he didn't. He wasn't like physically ready. He wasn't going to go out there and dominate. He wasn't going to dominate yeah. touches. But he had, kind of had to figure out like the little things that you need to be able to do to succeed. So now that like his talent is catching up and he's kind of on par with everybody that he's playing against, he still yeah. does all those little things. But he just so happens to be a guy that's six foot ten, can run a ball screen, can pass off the bounce, can make a three. Like he's he's a stud, dude. I think he's like yeah. I think he's legit, like a top twenty ish kind of pick. 